Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about poll rates. Uh, I've seen a lot of misinformation or maybe just misinterpretation of small data sets where somebody will open something or they'll think that one product or one type of product has booster packs in it with loaded packs that are either better or worse than this other product. I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. There's no reason for it. All booster packs are the same pull rate and with a large enough sample size, you will completely see that. And uh, we'll go through some, some basic stats here uh, just to, to show you guys how that works. Um, and uh, I guess we can get into the fact that we've opened many sets of 36 packs on this channel, all from random products. Uh, sometimes in terms of big hits, you'll get uh, one hyper rare, uh, none, or even two at sometimes, uh, which you typically wouldn't see in a booster box, but it all kind of evens out and ends up being that same rate in the long term. Uh, even the the eight first partner packs that I opened on the channel recently, there were two Sun and Moon hyper rares, Sun and Moon base hyper rares, which shouldn't happen, but it did. It doesn't mean that those packs are loaded. It just means that I got lucky and uh, that's what came of it. So let's uh, let's get right into it here and hopefully this makes a little bit more sense after some demonstrations. All right, starting off, I guess we'll go with a very basic demonstration of why uh, sample size is important. I can't remember which statistics course this was in, probably whatever the first one was uh, that I took in university. But essentially, we know the probability of flipping a coin is going to be 50% heads or 50% tails. So uh, with a small sample size, let's say six, we'll flip our coins here. Oh my God. All right, so that wasn't my intention, but you can see, <laughs> you can see here uh, that we flipped four heads and then a tails. And so this is giving us an 83% chance or 83% of the time we flipped heads. Uh, that is nowhere close to the actual value or the actual probability of flipping heads. So that's where if we start getting into larger sample sizes, we can get the actual probability. So this is a great example of why some of those diagrams that people will come out with and post on Instagram where they opened uh, a few thousand packs, um, that's not super meaningful because if you have a card that is one in 600, one in 800 packs, you're not going to get the actual results from those. Uh, but here, uh, as soon as we add a thousand flips to our data, in this case, uh, where there's only two outcomes, it doesn't take much for that to even off. we will see here that we're at a 0 0.503, which is exactly where we want to be. Um, and uh, it'll pretty much continue if we keep, we keep hitting that, it'll, stay pretty close to that 50% uh, rate where uh, we expect it to be where you have two sides one half of the time approximately is going to land heads the other half tails y'all still with me so let's use burning shadows as an example um, from set to set it's going to vary uh, with different rarity cards I would say very close to uh, average per 36 packs or per booster box you're going to receive a hyper rare or better so being hyper rare or secret rare so you get 22 of them here they're not necessarily uh, one in 22 chance there might be an extra one on the sheet but it should be very close to a one in 22 chance if you get one of these hyper rares or secret rares um, that rarity that one in 36 that uh, you have an equal odds of getting any one of them. So this is another thing that comes into play. Where the sheets of Pokemon cards are, the Pokemon company it does not have time. They're not going to bother creating different sheets for different products. It's all going to be the same sheets. They're going to print them up. They're going to put them in booster packs. As we've seen from the factory videos, usually they're hand packing them into elite trainer boxes and stuff like that. Uh, I would imagine that there's just a bunch of booster packs and then they get either placed into booster boxes. I would imagine 
that the booster box is in some particular order. So that's why you end up seeing usually one big hit per box with newer sets where there's uh, a few different rarities up in that top echelon. You might get a few of them per box, but that's pretty much how it works. So whether or not you get, you're not going to get that same order as a booster box gets, um, which typically means you're not going to get too many duplicates. It doesn't mean it's impossible, but for the most part, uh, even stuff in the same case seems less likely to be a duplicate of something from one of those booster boxes. So it could be you get all bad packs in something that is a multi-pack product. So if you got your blister packs, your tins, anything like that, you're just going to have a random one of those 36. So you're going to have an individual one in 36 chance of pulling one of these big boys. We'll call it that. And so we'll, let's, let's test this out with a random number generator, which should give us a pretty good idea of how it's going to happen without me uh, opening too many packs or speed running through all the videos that we've done. It's going to produce very similar results and give you guys a better idea of what's going on. So here we have a random number generator from calculator.net. And this is going to give us a pretty good idea. If we have a 1 in 36 chance of getting a hyper rare or secret rare from Burning Shadows, let's say, uh, and we generate 36 numbers, this 36 representing 36 packs, whether it be from a three pack blister, the like cardboard sleeve blisters, the single packs, elite trainer boxes, anything like that. Uh, this is this is what it's gonna give you. And you'll see here, uh, if we generate a number, so in this 36, uh, if we're assuming that the number one is our big hit, we got none of them. So there we go, no secrets, no hypers in our first 36 packs. If we hit it again, here we go, we got a one. So that means we get a hyper rare. So that would be a, say one in 22 chance that that was the Charizard. If you wanna go even deeper than that, in terms of pulling a specific one, that's the kind of odds that you're looking for, which is why we get these really insane numbers in these newer sets where there's so many hits um, even in Burning Shadows, so with there being like 22 uh, hyper rares and secret rares, and where they're probably around 1 in 36 packs, um, that's what you're dealing with. You, it's a crazy amount of product that you'd have to open in order to uh, to get these. So let's let's generate again. So there we go. We got another another one, which means we got a hyper rare or a secret rare uh, in our 36 packs. So here we didn't get one, unfortunate. Here, oh man, that's a good one. We got three. So as you can see, it's it's all gonna even out. Um, here we didn't get one again, but it's all right. We got three in the last 36. And this is kind of why people end up uh, trapped in the idea that, oh, I opened 36 packs and I didn't get a hyper rare. Well, no, but you could have got one. You could have got two, You could, as we saw, you could have got three. Um, so it's a little bit more uh, volatile, you might say, to get the loose packs rather than uh, the booster box, but you are more likely if you hit one to be able to hit another where they're not necessarily packaged in that order. They're just loose all over the place. I'm assuming that they're coming from different spots, probably from different products, definitely not in uh, in order from the the factory or from the line, from the packaging machine. Uh, you might end up with a few of them from the same thing. If they're the same product in the same multi-pack product or in the same ETV or something like that, you might have eight consecutive in an in elite trainer box. But that's uh, that's pretty much it. That's how it works. Sorry to burst anyone's bubble that thinks that uh, certain packs are lucky. I had an elite trainer box that had a uh, the Espeon alternate art VMAX in it recently. Uh, and that was just luck. Uh, I don't know what the actual pull rate is on that. Uh, with these newer sets, especially Fusion Strike and stuff that's gigantic like that, you would need such an insane sample size. Like you'd need probably 10,000 packs before you'd see real numbers on what the pull rates are. Um, so anything else just isn't gonna cut it. You'd have to pretty much extrapolate that data in order to, I guess, kind of predict or guess at what the the actual pull rates are so 
that's it. So before I go, let's let's do a little simulation here for a an elite trainer box. We have one through six. So one and six being your V's are better, your ultra rare or better. Uh, and we're generating eight numbers in a standard booster box or in a, in a standard elite trainer box. Uh, so if we generate and we assume that your one is a V or better. So here we have three V or better. Uh, and those could be anything from a, a V, a V max, uh, an alternate art, rainbow rare, full art, anything like that. So within that subsection or within that section of ones, that's where it lies. So within eight packs, it's not super uncommon to not even get a V. Uh, it can certainly happen, but as you see here, uh, sometimes you'll get three, sometimes you'll get four, uh, and then all of a sudden you'll get zero. So it's it's hard to say. You can have a couple unlucky elite trainer boxes, and it's going to happen. We're, uh, we're only one in six packs are going to be your hits, and you only have eight packs to open. It's gonna it's gonna burn you sometimes, but uh, overall, uh, you're going to come up with the actual probabilities if you open enough packs. Again, not everyone can do that, but that's uh, that's where it is. That's what it is. There's no packs that are better than other packs. There is a slight difference between booster boxes and individual packs from other products because they're not all gathered together. I'm assuming that's the reason. We don't have the actual process in which those packs are removed. I would imagine that those are coming straight off um, 36 in a row and going into your booster box where the other stuff is just pulled from from a probably a bulk booster pack area or uh, storage of some kind and then packed into your multi-pack products and everything else. And then even then, some of the uh, like the tins, the Pokeball tins, a lot of those are items that were in boxes, but they took them out. Maybe they didn't sell enough, and uh, so they repurposed the packs. You can see sometimes there's a little bit of like the the sticky stuff on them. Uh, that's usually to hold products in place. So when it was in a box or anything else, it might have had a little bit of that uh, like s sticky glue stuff to to hold it in place. I hope that helps you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. And remember, all booster packs are equal. Bye.